Compared to the belt reduction gearbox I made last time, a cycloidal drive allows us to have a much larger reduction ratio in the same space. In this video I'm going to show you how to design one of these easily using the power of Python and Fusion 360. Cycloidal drives work by having a number of pins equally spaced around a circle. A cycloidal disc with one less tooth than the number of pins can then be engaged with these pins. If we roll the disc around the pins you can see the disc itself will turn. In order to drive the disc we will need an eccentric bearing which can be mounted to the pins and to the disc. With this in place we can see the disc itself rotates much more slowly than the eccentric bearing. In fact, on this model where we have 10 pins and a 9 tooth disc, for every 9 times the bearing rotates, the disc itself will rotate one time. To pick up the drive from the ring, we also need a set of rollers which fit into holes in the disc and rotate around the centre of the pins. On this simple model we're using 3 rollers, but you can increase the number of rollers to increase the torque transmitted by the drive. The shape of the disc is an epicycloid and is formed by rolling a circle around the circumference of a larger circle a set number of times. The curve plotted by a single point on the first circle describes our disc's profile. To design the disc we need to know three things. First, the size of the pins. Larger pins will transmit more torque, but will obviously make the whole assembly larger. Secondly, the number of pins, which determines the reduction ratio. And thirdly, the size of the circle that the pins are set into. This isn't set in stone, but needs to be large enough to give a space between the pins for the cycloid to roll. From these values we can work out our other parameters. The circle that rolls around the disc needs to have a circumference exactly the same as the pitch of the pins. This can be found by dividing the pin circle radius by the number of pins. This value will also tell us the eccentricity of the disc, or how far to offset the eccentric bearing. The reduction ratio is simply the number of pins minus 1, in our previous example 10 pins, gave us a 9 to 1 reduction ratio. The circle that our cycloid will roll around needs to have a circumference exactly the same as the rolling circle multiplied by the number of pins minus 1, so it can roll around it a set number of times. Right, moving into Python, I'm going to use PyPlot here as it's a really quick way to visualise what we're making. I've got a couple of convenience methods up the top here which you're free to peruse in the code at the link below. But let's start by entering our parameters. Then we'll start a new plot and draw an outline of the base circle. Now we have the base, we need to roll our rolling circle around that. To make that happen, we'll need to do a bit of trigonometry. For any given point on a circle, if we know the radius of the circle and the angle that that radius makes to make the point, we can work out the xy coordinates. The x coordinate will simply be the radius times the cosine of the angle, and the y coordinate will be the radius times the sine of the angle. So, let's create our rolling circle. We don't care about its position, but we'll set the radius for now. Next we can loop around the base circle. We'll do this in one degree increments. Each time our loop runs, we can work out the coordinates of the rolling circle using the trig functions, and then update its position. And we'll add a quick pause at the end of the loop to allow PyPlot to update the drawing, and then let's run our code. Right, with the circle going around the base circle, we just need to make it roll. We'll create a line to represent a fixed point on the rolling circle's circumference. And then in our loop we can update the line's position, so one end is always at the centre of the rolling circle, and the other rotates around it. We want the point on the rolling circle to rotate faster than the rolling circle itself, so we can just multiply the angle of this line by the number of pins. Let's run it again and see what happens. So now we just need to trace the path that the end of that line describes. We'll create a blank polygon to store the path in, and then add the position of the end of the line to the set of points that describe that polygon. If I quickly add our pins to this plot, you can see we have one thing left to do. Our cycloid actually passes through the centre of the pins, so to let it fit inside the circle of the pins, we just need to offset it by the radius of the pins. So there's our finished cycloidal disc. As you can see, every pin is always touching the disc, so there should be no backlash, and every pin is used to transmit the torque. One last tweak we can do is to change the eccentricity. At the moment the disc is fairly unbalanced. That means it will transmit high torque but would vibrate if it's spun at high speeds. We can make it more balanced by reducing the eccentricity. Here we'll reduce it by 2mm and change the offset of the pins by the same amount. You can see the cycloid is much more smoothed out now and should run a lot more smoothly. It's possible to take this too far though. This cycloid would probably start to slip past the pins under load. Now we just have to take this into Fusion 360. In Fusion 360 we'll start by adding a new script and then editing it. 
This should open up a copy of Visual Studio Code with a Python template loaded. Using the Fusion API, we can now create a new sketch in our current design. Next, we'll just take our parameter definitions that we had before. It's worth pointing out here that Fusion scripts use centimeters and not millimeters for measurement. We'll add our loop in as well, but here we'll only draw one node of the cycloid instead of all of them. Fusion can be pretty slow, and it'll be much quicker to use a circular pattern later to copy them. Fusion's version of Python doesn't come with many libraries, so we'll just add a couple of convenience methods in. Next, instead of defining a polygon, we'll draw the cycloid using lines. The first time we run the loop, we'll just define a point, and then the second time we'll draw a line from that last point to the new one, and so on. Then we refresh the viewpoint at the end of the loop, so we can see it draw the curve in real time. And now we just need to offset it to make room for the pins. Fusion lets us select all the lines in one go, and then call offset on them, passing in a point on the side of the curve that we want the offset to go. So now our first lobe is drawn, we just need to make a full cycloidal disk. We'll just edit the sketch, select our curves, and then create a circular pattern nine times around the centre. Then we can extrude our sketch upwards to create our disk. Next we'll lay out our pins. We'll start by offsetting a point from the origin by our eccentricity, and then creating a pin 50mm from that. We'll then create a circular pattern of 10 pins round the outside, and add a couple of extra circles around our offset point for a base and for the eccentric bearing. We can now extrude out both our base and the pins. Now we'll put some holes in our cycloidal disk, first of all for the eccentric bearing, and secondly for rollers to transfer the drive. The holes for the rollers are determined by the size of the rollers plus two times the eccentricity. So that's the cycloidal disk and pins done. The eccentric bearing and rollers are trivial to add. The roller is just placed on a circle the same size as the roller hole circle. As usual, all of the CAD and code that I've shown here are available on my GitHub page linked down below. Next time we'll be taking this cycloidal drive and making a smaller version which will mount on a stepper motor. So if you'd like to see that, please subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if you think I should have done anything differently. And hit that like button if you've enjoyed this. See you later.